Hello. My name is Jennifer Irwin. Also, I'll go by the handle Technitar online. And this is my submission for week three. And I... It's not really remarkably different from other submissions on the front end. I'll just go ahead and give the game a quick play here. It only seems to work in Microsoft Edge, by the way. I, I don't know if everybody else has problems making their games run in Chrome, but... um. Yeah, I have to do this in Edge. This is on itch.io. I have a link to it in the submission description. And here's the instruction screen. Press space to jump. You can double jump. Left shift to dash. Um, and there's also a very dramatic uh, death animation that I accidentally made, but I decided that I liked it so much I wanted to keep it. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, as you can see, jumping over something while dashing actually gives two points instead of one. Uh, so it's harder to clear the obstacles, but it also gives you more points. And if you're good enough to get up to 40 in score, you uh, it becomes almost impossible. <laughs> I, I made the spawning get very aggressive at that point. But this is just a little demo, so take another play. As you can see, he can double jump very high if you do it quickly, but that also means that you don't know when you're going to come down. So it's a very risky move, especially when they start spawning more. But anyway, that's the game, and um, what I'm really proud of is not really the front end so much. I've always been more of a back end kind of person, so I wanted to show you what I did on the back end to this game. This is the code that I've written for it, and all the scripts are in the scripts folder here in Assets. And then here in Visual Studio Code is all the stuff that I wrote. Um, heavily commented, because my target audience here is kind of my fellow course, uh, course takers. And I've got, I've got several managers. I've got a game manager, which keeps track of the score, and also um, helps... Let, let other scripts know whether the player is dashing. Um, I've got move background, which is responsible for resetting the background when it scrolls past half of its own length. I've got the move left script, which um, also participates in moving the background a little bit, but it also primarily moves the obstacles. And the obstacles, when they go off the screen, they despawn themselves and they um, activate giving the player points. Let's see, the player controller, if you look over here, this is a very large script. A lot of comments, but um, this is sort of my, my baby here. I used a whole bunch of events, um, and that's something we haven't really gone over in this course, but I learned it in the Unity C Sharp Survival Guide. Uh, events are they're a way to make it so that your whole game is more easily aware of things that happen. So like when the player runs into an obstacle, um, I have this player hit obstacle event, and then other um, scripts like the, uh, let's see, yeah, the spawn manager, uh, the spawn manager can subscribe to these events, like in this line right here, and then it knows when to run a certain function, game over. It It is forced to run game over down here when the player hits the obstacle. So that's a way to have scripts communicate between each other that I really became interested in and I wanted to give it a try live. And so I'm really happy with the result. Now what I've done here is probably really overkill for a project this simple. But if I were to add to this game, using these events uh, makes it a lot easier to add new, uh, new features. Like with the dash, I had forgotten to add in the dash that was part of the optional things. And so... When I uh, went to add the dash, I just turned it into new events, and then I was able to make the move left and 
other stuff um, react to that. I think the game manager, yeah, the game manager reacts to dashing too uh, by increasing the score when we're dashing. So, um, and then I've got the UI over here that uh, when the player dies, the score that's at the top of the screen, uh, you can't really see it here, but there, there's score up here as you saw in the game. Uh, that's taken away and then the final score and the restart is displayed. And then when we restart the game, uh, let's see. Oh uh, yeah, start UI is called again, and then it sets that top score display active, and it deactivates the final score display when the game is restarted. And I also used what's called a singleton uh, for my managers. A singleton basically means that it is it's a global script sort of that can be called from any other script. Uh, this is especially useful in Game Manager for score, because the score is kept there, but UI Manager can ask Game Manager, like right here, about what the score is. And then that then the UI knows to put that in the text that's displayed on the screen. Um, singletons are something that there is only one of them that exists throughout the entirety of the program, and so that makes them really good for holding values like this that are supposed to be uh, known to everything um, and can be grabbed at any time. And so I really like singletons and I also really like object pools. Um, this script here, this is the spawn manager, it takes prefabs, a list of prefabs that I put in the inspector. I'll show you that right here. Uh, spawn manager. And I have the obstacle prefabs that I made. So I put those in there and then this makes a list of obstacles. It, it randomizes um, a set of the prefabs and it makes 10 of them. So then if I play it in here, uh, mute audio, if I play it here you can see what's happening here. It actually creates deactivated versions of these and it activates them as it spawns them. And when they go off the side of the screen, they're deactivated. But what's happening is that you don't have to destroy any of the objects once they go off the screen. It just reuses the same ones over and over again, and it picks a random one out of the object pool. So this is um, something that you don't really need in a game that's this small, but uh, it is really useful for large games where you have a large number of, say, bullets. Say you had a game where you could have 10,000 bullets active at once, where it, if you're destroying all of those constantly as they're being used, that's causing the, the system to do a lot of garbage collection. And garbage collection is something that I don't fully understand yet myself, but I know that making the system do it too much is bad. So object pools help defeat that, and I really like using object pools. It also just feels cleaner than to destroy and recreate the object every time you want one. So what the spawn manager does is it, it keeps track of these obstacles, and it, uh, it reactivates them. When we want an obstacle to spawn, we ask the spawn manager, hey, can we have one? And uh, it looks for one that is not active right now. It looks for one that's not currently, you know, the, the player isn't currently coming up on it on the screen. And when it finds one in a shuffled, uh, in a randomized list of, it, of itself, it then gives the obstacle to us. Or if there are somehow 10 obstacles already on the screen, which at that point you're in trouble, um, it will actually make a new obstacle, an 11th obstacle, and add it to the pool to reuse that one too. It can just keep making them infinitely as the, as it needs them, but um, chances are by the time you're far enough in the game to have it to where the pool needs to get more objects put in it, you're probably going to crash very soon. <laughs> so uh, that's what this code here does actually, is modifies the difficulty based on the current score of the player. Once you reach 40 points, your obstacles are spawning at a minimum of 0.8 seconds apart and or no minimum of 0.3 and a maximum of 0 0.8 which uh, that's pretty tough and if you manage to go beyond that um it's it's even lower so it gets pretty much impossible at the speed that you're going but anyway um all this code is available on the itch.io page if you want to take a look at it. There's also a complete Unity package. I would really love to hear feedback from you know people that might want to take a look at this. And uh, I this is the 
most I've ever really commented any code, most I've ever really cleaned up code, and I'm very proud of it, so I hope that y'all take a look at it. I never did go over the animation stuff. Um, well, you can, you can look at this if you want to on your own. It's, it's a lot of stuff to go over, basically. Uh, it controls the animation speed based on what we're doing right now, whether we're jumping, whether we're running or dying. I also have the intro thing happening with the walking on from the side of the screen, which was surprisingly hard to put in, because you have to do that in update, which usually controls player movement the way we've been using it, but you have to lock the player movement uh, right here in order to have the, the intro walk on do its thing properly, and then when you're not in the intro anymore, then you give control to the player. So that one was tough to put in for me. Um, so yeah, I hope you all take a look at it and enjoy the code, and maybe you might learn something from it. Um, if you like the idea of events, um, I think we're going to be learning about this later on in this course, but I wanted to, to put them into action as early as possible. I really love them. Um, go ahead and look them up. They, they're kind of difficult to understand at first, but once you get the hang of them, you realize just how powerful they really are. Events and object pools and singletons are the, that combination of things is my jam right now. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I've already rambled on for too long. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the code. I, the, the, like I said, the game itself is sort of visually unremarkable in comparison to some of the things that other people do, but um, I really am a back-end kind of person, so this, this part is the stuff that I love doing, and I, I really uh, wanted people to see that, so I'll see you in Unity.